Hey guys! I am back for another live video, which happens every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I just got like a little nervous. I'm like, I said 5 p.m., right? <laughs> oh, I have so many live streams now. Like I've, I have saturated my career with live stream videos, which is actually awesome because I love them. They are just such an amazing way to engage with people. I just did an Instagram live. I, actually, this is my third live video today. Today feels like a blur as a result. Um, I did a, I have some really exciting news before I get into this topic, because I know the topic is something that a lot of you are gonna be interested in. So I will get there. And if you're really eager to hear it, I will link to it down below. But uh, if this video turns out to be 30, 45 minutes, I'm sure it'll be at least 30 minutes. Uh, I never know. But uh, I will link down below where the, the topic that I'm going to discuss today will actually start, but I'll spend the first five minutes or so welcoming people, saying hello to live viewers, and you guys are always welcome to skip forward through this part and get to the juicy stuff. Uh, but anyways, a few things. So I finally got going with Eco Vegan Pal. If you've been following my work and watching this channel lately, you will know that Eco Vegan Pal is something that I've been working on for a while. I, I did like the first public launch of it last fall during the No Meat Athlete bundle that I was part of. And that was the first time that I took in members. And then I spent the past seven months working on it behind the scenes and was really struggling with it because I had this idea in my head and I couldn't figure out how to execute it or I was having a lot of, and or I should say, having a lot of resistance to it. So I finally committed to a platform to test. So the word committed is used loosely here because I really want to test it out before I open it widely to everyone. However, because those of you watching on, on Uncensored are such big parts of my life and you've been around the journey for so long, if any of you want to join Eco Vegan Pal Right now, technically as soon as I'm done recording this live video, if you, any of you want to join, message me or email me. I would say probably email me. Don't leave a comment because the, I'm just not, comments are not a reliable message of communicating, um, a reliable means of communicating with me because I go through ups and downs in terms of reading comments and responding comments, but I, I definitely read every single email that comes in and private messages on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, so those are really the best ways to reach me right now. I will leave my email address in the, in the um, description field underneath this video. And speaking of which, I will also leave a link if any of you are curious about Eco Vegan Pal but not sure about being a member yet, uh, you can sign up for the newsletter list to stay in the loop and I'll notify you as soon as things are further along. So just a quick summary of where we're at. Eco Vegan Pal is a membership group. It is a paid membership group. There is a small fee that you can either pay monthly or yearly. And right now, I'm like still trying to figure out exactly how much to charge, but um, I will give you the annual rate of $99, which I think is what I did for No Meat Athlete, somewhere around $100 a year or you can pay monthly, but right now I'm planning on just taking in annual members because I want people that are super committed. Whereas in the past, or actually when I have been doing memberships for years now, I find that monthly members are usually not as committed. And so they kind of just like want to dip their toes in and that's fine. But right now in the very beginning of Eco Vegan Pal, I want it to be uh, very committed people so that we can get things moving. Right now I have 56 members in there, which is wonderful, and people are slowly getting more and more involved. It's people from around the world, and it's basically a place where you guys can privately, securely, safely be part of this community. And part of what the offering is, is weekday live video Q&As just for members. So similar to what I do throughout, but these are like literally ask me anything questions. I don't hold back because this is not public, so it's a safer space for me and for viewers. It's also this incredible platform where you can communicate with one another. And the new platform that I'm using for Eco Vegan Pal is so exciting 
because it's a beautiful way for you to see where people live all around the world, like not exactly where they live, but like what cities people are in. So you can actually connect with them, private message them, uh, ask questions to one another. There's all these amazing features that I've been working on for a very long time. So that's a little update on EcoView and PAL. I'm so, so excited about it. So um, anyways, that's I'm getting out some of the announcements out of the way. Let's dive into today's topic. You guys, if you're watching live, feel free to ask any questions that you have and any requests, any contribution you want to make to this topic. I really would love for this to be a conversation because this is recorded live, but you certainly don't have to participate. Uh, but just chime in at any point if you need clarification, if you have a more specific question, if you want to share your own opinion on something, as long as you're considerate to me and the other viewers, you can participate as much as you want. I did just see a comment come in. Um, and Teresa, you asked me a question that I don't know what, what is that? Uh, the answer is definitely no, I think. Oh, it's a type of meditation. Actually, the answer might be maybe. So uh, I th who is this? Uh, Teresa just asked about uh, Vipassana meditation. I will have to research that further to see if I've done it before. It's possible. I've done a lot of forms of meditation. But anyways, today's topic is about healing from heartbreak. And this was because of a request from last week's live video where I gave you guys the opportunity to vote on the topic of the video and we ended up talking about friendships. So if you haven't seen that yet, you're curious about friendships, it was a super in-depth, long video. It's like an hour long. Uh, I didn't feel like it was my strongest video, but it was very interesting. I learned some things and I really enjoyed reading the comments. And I had a request for talking about heartbreak because that was the second most popular um, topic to discuss. So that's what we're going to discuss today. And I feel like this is something that we all go through. I wouldn't say like every single person, so maybe the word all is, is a little too generalized because maybe there are some people in this world who haven't experienced heartbreak, I'm not sure. But I would guess that the great majority of people in this lifetime have experienced heartbreak. I'm also gonna move for a second because I need to close my door. It's kind of loud out there today. Usually where I live is very quiet, but this time of day it tends to get louder. And April, thank you so much for your sweet words on the, on the friendship video. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, I just felt like it, I was fumbling through that topic a lot. Because <laughs> I didn't prepare it. I actually didn't prepare today's video either. Anyway, so I took some notes on something that I read recently that I wanted to share with you as a, as a bridge into this conversation. I can share my thoughts and experiences. And again, I welcome all of you watching, whether you're watching live or the recording, to chime in. So I'm going to read you this really great piece of advice. Uh, let me see where I got this from. I will, I will put the uh, source in the description field. Okay, right, right. Okay, this was so interesting. So this is actually part of a series, uh, a like a blog interview series called Thank You Heartbreak. And I believe that Thank You Heartbreak is also like the title of a website. Hold on, let me just double check this. What is this person's name? I think, let me see, because I want I know that you guys are going to ask. <laughs> uh, there's like a song called Thank You Heartbreak, but the author of this did this series where this author, I think, interviewed people about heartbreak and how heartbreak has actually helped them. And so right now there are three articles. I will share them with you when my computer des decides to operate a little faster. Sorry for the delay, but anyways, I will start reading this in the meantime. So, this is all quoted from this article, from this blog post. So much of our fear stems from or is perpetuated by the stories we hear and the stories we tell ourselves. Breakup stories are some of the worst and most damaging. Seldom do we hear of a breakup that makes us think, wow, if only heartbreak had motivated me motivated me in that direction, then I would have let go sooner and feared less for myself. The reality is these stories are out there. You just have to ask for them. 
and that's the theme of this. I'll probably change the title of this video, Thank You Heartbreak, because I actually think that is such a beautiful, beautiful um, title. Imagining if we are grateful for heartbreak, if we see it as a gift, and I really believe that we should. I'll pause for a second to say, Rachel, uh, she says she's really excited to be here live. I'm excited that you're here too, Rachel, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I'm having some sort of technical difficulties with my computer, but here we go. Let me find the author's name of this. This, um, oh, right, right, right. She actually has this cool website. I will link to this in the description field. So if you're watching live, you can come back when I'm done and I'll have links to everything. And um, she has a website called, I think it's called Breaking Upward. She's an advice columnist and breakup coach, trained and certified in sol solution-focused life coaching. And her name is Chelsea Lee Trescott. And her website's called Break Upward. Hopefully you won't go there yet, but uh, you're welcome to pause this when you're watching the recording and go, go watch that if you'd like. But it's a beautiful website. So here's this some of these bullet points from this. And maybe I'll read. She has three different articles on the subject matter. It's so interesting. Question. If every person that comes into our lives is truly an opportunity for us to learn and grow, what do you believe your ex was there to teach you? Anybody want to answer that? Again, if you're watching live, you can answer it. If you're watching the recording, you can write a comment on this. I love that. So I'll ask one more time. If every person that comes into our lives is truly an opportunity for us to learn and grow, what do you believe your ex was there to teach you? Now, if you're like me, you might have multiple exes. <laughs> as I do. I actually don't like to use the term X. I once came across the term previous partner, which sounded a lot more positive to me. So I tend to use that. I try to avoid the word X. I'll, let's see, what, what would I, uh, sometimes I'll just phrase it differently. I'll be like, oh yeah, we used to date or he was my boyfriend or something like that. A lot of people ask me about Jason, for example, so I can use Jason because we're very public with our relationship. We were public when we were dating and we're public as friends and people still think that we're dating. <laughs> people have even thought that we were married, but we're not. We were just very, very good friends. I often use the term best friend for him. Although I, I, I find that word is important to be mindful of the usage similar to last week's video. It's like how st strongly do you use the word? Speaking of which, even though last week's video on friendship wasn't my favorite video that I've ever done, it did get me thinking for a while about friendship and for days and days after I recorded that video I was thinking about like how I use the word friend and I think that that's true when we use any words and so putting a positive spin on things. Hi Jen, thanks for being here. So coming back to this question, if every person com that comes into our lives is truly an opportunity for us to learn and grow, what do you believe your ex was there to teach you? And April, just uh, good timing, just said, they definitely teach you more about yourself and what you're looking for in your life, whether from a partner or anyone in your life, type of person, what they add to your life, etc. Oh, Rachel liked last week's video too. Okay. I think I was being too hard on myself. I didn't think it was that good. <laughs> But um, it was an interesting topic. So for what I learned, let's use Jason for example. Jason has helped me learn and grow in so many ways, probably more so than anybody that I've ever dated. And probably because he and I have remained friends. I've had loose friendships. Again, the word friend might not be the best word for, for men that have stayed in my life. Uh, Flower Power just said they taught me that I deserve to be loved and cherished more. I love that. That's such a beautiful way to say it. Yes. F Jason, I guess, he has taught me to, hmm, he's, like I said, taught me a lot. He's taught me how to listen. He's taught me how to be very mindful about myself. Actually, a really great example is, and thank you Yachty, who just said she also liked last week's video. Okay, three of you have said it. Thank you. <laughs> Clearly I was too hard on myself because I was like, I felt like insecure about last week's video. Whatever. Um, so 
Jason and I spent a lot of time together this weekend. And if you follow me on Instagram and watch my stories, you will have seen all the details. One of the things we did this weekend was we went to a meditation workshop or a workshop, I should say, at my meditation studio. There was like a little meditation. It was mainly a talk about dating and relationships and how that is tied into meditation and Buddhism and just the Buddhist mindset, spirituality. And that's actually the second workshop. If you guys saw one of my most popular videos was about sexuality. A few weeks before that, Jason and I went to this love and intimacy symposium. And it was really interesting going to these workshops with him, having dated him in the past, and also being really close friends who are both single and looking for relationships. So we learn a lot constantly, career-wise, personal-wise, love-wise, from each other. It's, he's really one of the greatest gifts in my life. And I, I really hope that some of you may able to be able to experience that, but it's a rare thing I recognize because as I said, I've had a number of previous partners and some of them I've been friends with. Most of them though are really like minor roles in, in my life. Um, as a side note, I recently heard from somebody that broke my heart last year and I can tell you more about that if it, if it pertains. But to answer this question, one great lesson that I learned from Jason recently, <laughs> we were driving some, to one of the destinations last week. We were in the car or before we even got in the car, Jason snapped at me because I was like slightly annoyed that he wasn't ready to go. I was like eager to get to our destination and I drove to his place to meet him and he was driving us to the next place. And I just kind of like said something, Snap! I snapped first. I said something like, why aren't you ready? Why is it taking so long? And we bicker like an old married couple because we've know been in each other's lives for so long and know each other so well. Or I'm almost like brother and sister is probably a better definition. But um, he snapped back at me and I didn't think that I deserved it. So when we finally got in the car on the way to this destination, I brought it up to him. I'm like, why did you snap at me? Like that didn't feel necessary. Why are you starting off our day on a bad note? And maybe that wasn't, that's not exactly what I said, but I was trying to say it in a kind inquisitive way to see how we could work through it. And through our conversation about this, I recognized my own role. I recognized that I did something that triggered him and he chose to do something that also triggered me and it was this back and forth. And to sum it all up, what I learned from Jason is I actually get to observe myself and my patterns because we trigger each other similar to people that are in relationships. Even though we're just friends now, we still have a similar dynamic in a lot of ways as we did when we were dating. And so it's beautiful because it's almost like being married, I, I would assume, where like you're around somebody a lot and you love them, but sometimes they do things that drive you crazy. And I think it's like an opportunity to practice, I guess. So I have an opportunity to just learn a lot about myself and grow as a person through him and he is my ex. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Now, you guys might not have that, but you could see this within your current relationships uh, or, you know, they can be friendships, they could be dating, they can be marriages, they could be divorces, they could be all sorts of things. Like, how can you learn more about yourself and the other person and how you show up in your, in your life? You can also learn so much through heartbreak, as we're, we're talking about today, too. You know, I definitely had heartbreak when Jason and I ended things, and we went back and forth. Our relationship took a while to fully unravel and turn into a friendship and it was really hard at times and uh, I'll pr there's a few other questions in here that I want to get to before I get more in depth before we move on to the questions there are more comments have come in uh, Shamsa said they taught me to love myself more that's so important April said my boyfriend said they taught him to respect himself and he needs to be able to respect the person he's with oh, he's listening to the stream too that's amazing so I, I really feel like we can learn so much from the people that we used to date or the, maybe the people that we were married to, the people that we love, like whatever you consider an ex or a previous partner, someone you were with before. Instead of projecting all this hurt and pain onto them, how can we learn? And I think that also takes a lot of time too because if it's super recent, it can feel so hurtful 
that it feels impossible to learn anything from it. However, I will say, last year, I went, or in, I would say in the past year, so the past 365 days, so mostly 2016, but also 2017, I dated several men and had several bouts of heartache, and I, I don't know if heartbreak would be the best term, but let's just say strong heartache. And I lost a friendship last year, I lost a family member last year, I had a lot of loss in my life, and because of that, my heart hurt, I fell down a lot, and I just felt like I was suffering a lot last year. And the beginning of this year too, actually, up until like probably through May, through mid-May, like I was still working through a lot of things, so not that long ago. And what I chose to do was see how I, what, what I could learn from each of those experiences. And that's where I started doing a lot of reading and a lot of pondering and meditation and yoga and a lot of things came out of it. So I grew a lot as a person, but I also learned so much, even in the times that it was the hardest. One of the examples of a guy that I dated where I experienced some heartache last year, it brought up a lot of old emotions for me. And I found myself like kind of like detoxing and found myself noticing a lot of, of my reactions and my triggers and my behavior. And so while it was, while I was in it, while I was experiencing that heartache, I recognized that the best way for me to heal from that heartache was to learn and grow during the heartache. So I could have just decided to mope around and complain and woe is me and you know I certainly had those moments <laughs> I mean there were times and there was like I remember thinking it was so odd because this person was not super significant or I should say relatively significant on a conscious level but somehow on an unconscious level he triggered a lot of significance and I think he was just bringing up things that needed to be dealt with and it was such a gift because I had to heal through that pain. And I think I had buried a lot. And I, I'm sure there's still even more buried within me because, if, you know, even in the smallest relationships or dating experiences, I, I experienced some, some heartache. And I'm grateful for all of that as much as it hurts. Like, it, I think it's just a, it's a choice to be grateful for pain because the pain is where you can grow, or the pain is also where you can choose not to grow. I personally choose to grow, but some people choose to shut down. Some people choose to be consumed by the pain. Some people don't wanna deal with it. They wanna hide from it, they wanna run from it, they wanna bury it down, and that's how they handle it. And that's a choice. I find, though, that if you don't deal with it right away, it's gonna, manifest somehow. Forget where I was talking about this. Oh, I think I was talking about this in, on one of the Eco Vegan Pal live streams was how sometimes our emotions manifest as physical ailments. I mean, stress plays such a role. So any stress that you experience, emotional stress included, really can affect your body. I'm sure many of you have felt this before, you know, like your body experiences all of that emotional pain and if you bottle it down too much it could actually manifest into major issues sometimes even life-threatening deathly issues and I don't want that to be the reason I get sick I don't want to get sick period so I would rather deal with it as soon as possible and pull up all the old stuff while I'm at it you know, if I'm going to suffer, I might as well heal at the same time. And that's a big realization I had last year. There was last, last fall, I had one thing after another. It was like I was getting punched uh, while I was experiencing heartache. I had the death of my family shortly after the death in the family. <sighs> Did you guys see how she just jumped over my pillows? <laughs> Bravo, Evie. That was amazing. You'll have to rewind it if you had, didn't see that part. It was pretty good. So, yeah, I experienced heartache and then death and then a loss of friendship and then more heartache. It was just like one after another. And I was like, 
kind of in shock of just like how all of this was happening, but I was like, especially in hindsight, but I think I recognized this back then too, how beautiful an opportunity it was to just go through all the hard stuff at once because I did a lot of emotional purging and cleansing, detoxing, healing, all of that just had to happen. Let me read some comments and I'm gonna go, to, actually let me go on to the next question so I give you guys a chance to respond if you want to while I'm reading the question. So the next question, how did you adjust your mindset after your breakup? So instead of focusing on what was lost, you focused on what you could gain. One more time. How did you adjust your mindset after your breakup so that instead of focusing on what was lost, you focused on what you could gain? I kind of just answered that, but I'll, I'll, I can get more into it if you'd like. But as I'm giving you guys the opportunity to type out comments if you want to participate, if you want to share, I'm going to read through some of the other comments that came through. Let's see here. So Yadi said, I'm scared to start any relationship because of the fear of getting hurt. I hope this video helps me. You're not alone in that, Yadi. As easy as it is to say that we can learn from pain and that we don't, sh may not benefit from hiding from pain, a lot of us are scared. I feel that way sometimes. <laughs> you know, especially right after a breakup or right after the end of any sort of relationship. I'm, I often react by closing down. Actually, this is interesting. My meditation teacher at this workshop I was at this weekend talked about the symbolism of this when we sometimes sit or walk around with our shoulders rounded like this. A lot of us do this when we're on our phone. Oh, I'm using my, I was like, where's my phone? I'm using it. So just pretend this is my phone. You know, like you see people like this and they're just hunched over typing on their phone, looking down. Uh, they're hunched over when they're driving their cars. We, we tend to slack and slouch, you know, all these different things. My meditation teacher had a great point. He said, that can actually be seen as hiding our heart or protecting our heart. So notice the difference when you do this versus when you do this and you roll your shoulders back, which is something they teach you in meditation and they teach you in yoga and other things. Like it's not just benefiting your posture so that, you know, you sit up straight and it, it shows a lot of confidence and it helps with your spine and aches and pains, but it also exposes your heart when you sit like this with your shoulders back versus this, which is actually, you know, if it's slightly hard to see, but you guys can tell the difference of doing this. Right now you literally can't see my heart. I'm covering it with my shoulder versus this. I'm exposing my heart. It's such a huge difference, right? I loved that point. So sometimes even just changing your posture is saying that you are open and not just open mentally, but you're open with your heart and you're open to letting people in. So no, everybody, if you want to notice yourself right now, how you're sitting or pay more attention throughout your days to how your posture is and especially in social situations. And so coming back to Yadi's comment, you know, how we protect ourselves, whether it's our posture, whether it's we're not socializing, whether it's we're not dating or we're saying no to dates or we're, you know, doing whatever we can to avoid any opportunity to love because of fear. That's a very common thing, Yadi. You're certainly not alone. I'm sure there are other people here that can relate to you. And it's a choice. I actually heard something really great. So when I was going through one of my, the ends of a relationship earlier this year, uh, I was dating the guy and it ended very abruptly and it was painful. I was listening, I'll put this in the notes for this video. There's a um, kind of like a love coach named Matthew Hussey who is kind of like a trendy love coach. He's a good looking British guy. I think he's probably been on Oprah. Like he's like, you know, becoming a well-known name. He has millions of followers and written a book and on and on. I think if Gen, Gen Z said uh, 
cute guy. He is very cute if you're referring to Matthew. Definitely my type, <laughs> but um, he's got some great advice and she has his book. I read his book. I listened to the audio book. Yachty knows about him and he's got a website and he has a phenomenal podcast. The one thing I would say about him is that he is very salesy. He's a total entrepreneur, so he's always pitching something. However, he's so knowledgeable and he has great points. And so even if he doesn't resonate with you 100% and even if the salesy part of his work turned you off a little, he's really worth looking into. His podcast especially really helped me during my challenging time. And one of the things that he said, which I wasn't ready to hear at the time, but I kept in my mind, so sometimes maybe this video is an example, you're not ready for this, but you won't forget it. It'll stay in your mind somewhere and it'll come out when you need it. And one of my favorite podcasts of his, I think I listened to like three times this episode. I'll try to find it for you guys. It's been a while since I listened to it, but he said, think about yourself on your deathbed or towards the end of your life. So if, if all of you guys want to do this right now, <laughs> might not be the most pleasant thing to think about, but let's just transport ourselves to that point of our lives if we're lucky enough to have a deathbed, some of us might, unfortunately might die suddenly. <laughs> That's a morbid thing to think about, but it's true. You know, thinking about death is actually one of the best motivational things that you can do for yourself in your life. So think about you, let's just say we all live to we're 109. That's what I'm aiming for. So uh, here I am, 109. Let's say I'm in hospice and my life is wrapping up and you're reflecting on your life as many of us think we may do while we're at that position. Hopefully our mental state is out. <laughs> so given all the right scenarios or anywhere further along in your life and you're just sitting there reflecting on your life, are you going to sit there and be glad that you protected your heart? And Matthew brought up, I think, an actual example. I don't know if it was like an interview or he was just kind of imagining this, that most people are going to regret what they didn't do and the risks that they didn't take more than they would re regret doing something. Now, that's a classic example you could apply to most scenarios in our life. But when it comes to love, love is one of the greatest gifts Love is one of the most desirable things. Love is something that most of us want to experience, especially if you're watching this. We want love. And love is something that in some cases comes unexpectedly, suddenly, it's a surprise, it might come easily. It comes in a lot of different forms, but it also comes in the form of learning lessons. And in my life, love has just, constantly becoming in, in form lesson, uh, in the lesson form. It's like one after another, I've made, in the past few years since I broke up with Jason, the past few years has just been like short things, constant learning lessons. And I could just hide away and go, you know what? I've tried it all. I don't want to try anymore. This sucks. This hurts. Love hurts. Love's the worst. Love never works out. On and on. We can go through those mental thought patterns. But if we were old, would that stop? <laughs> if we were on our deathbed, would we look back and go, you know what? I'm really glad that I protected my heart and said, no thanks, love. I don't want you. Or would we say, you know what, love hurts a lot, but that's part of the experience of being alive. And I really wish that I kept trying. I really wish that I had opened up my heart. I really wish that I had given it another shot. I wish I had talked to that person on the street or that party or I'd gone on the dating app or website or I had gone to that singles event whatever it was. I feel like Matthew has a point there. Most of us probably would regret it if we kept our hearts closed our whole lives. I don't think that in those last moments or days or weeks or months 
of our lives or even years. I don't, I don't think that we would be sitting there saying, I'm glad I was alone. At least not me, because I want love. And I, again, I really feel like most people want love whether they want to admit it or not. So the heartbreak, the heartbreak is what comes along with it, is the heartbreak part of the journey. If that's the price to pay, it's a pretty small price. Because if there is a love out there for all of us, then shouldn't we do whatever it takes to find it? I'm actually listening to an audiobook right now, which I'll also put in the notes called Brita. It's written by the author of The Alchemist, Paolo or Paulo Coelho. And it's really interesting. I, I read a quote from this book and I was inspired to read it or listen to it, I should say. And in the book, they talk about soulmates. And I thought it was really interesting. I was sitting there going, hmm, depends on your definition of soulmate, but I think that, I think that there are soulmates. In Eat, Pray, Love, actually, they, they had a great definition of soulmate, basically saying like a soulmate is somebody that you, like your mirror image, like you learn from. And so I don't know, like whatever you want to call a soulmate, like it's basically, are you destined to be with one person or multiple people? Are there people out there that you're meant to be with? Whether you believe in that or not, it's an interesting thing to think about. So if you haven't met that person yet, or you did meet one person that's one version of it, but maybe you're single again and you know, you're not you're not with somebody currently that really fits you or or no one at all. What if that person's out there? Actually, here's another good story. I'm already almost 40 minutes into this, so but you guys are pretty engaged. There's a good number of people watching live and commenting. So thank you for being here. And those of you watching the recording. Bravo for watching long videos. <laughs> If you join Eco Vegan Pal, one thing I'm going to offer is like audio versions of all my long videos. So if you guys just want to listen like it's a podcast, it's a perk of becoming an Eco Vegan Pal member. But uh, anyways, so I met someone this weekend at Shabbat. And again, I'm not Jewish. I don't know if I said this here. I mentioned this somewhere else. I'm not Jewish, but I love going to Shabbat. My friends had a wonderful Shabbat this weekend. And... I met this woman and her husband there, and I asked her how they met, and she said we met through JDate, which is the Jewish dating app or website, and she said, you know, I didn't think that I would meet someone on there, but we were meant to, to be, not just because they're happily married, but she said she started listing out all these coincidences. First of all, she said we probably never would have met without an app because we lived in such different areas of the city <laughs> in Los Angeles. You know, if you live on in Santa Monica, you're probably, you're very unlikely to meet someone in like Eagle Rock, for example. Like they're very far away from each other. LA is very spread out. So unless like there's some coincidence that brings you together, you might not meet. And so she's like, well, we probably wouldn't have met because we live so far away from each other. However, we had a mutual friend in common. I think like she said, somebody like his brother was either married to or dating someone that she knew. So actually it's possible that they would have met, but it might've taken them a lot longer. And so her belief was that they were meant to be and there was all these um, like uh, things that they had in common. So the dating app was just the quicker way to meet each other or it was just, I think it, the quicker way is a better way to look at it. I think that they are kind of meant to be. But I just thought that was so interesting. And, you know, I've hesitated with dating apps. I finally gave in and started using one last fall. And I've had very mixed experiences. And I go back and forth. I'm like, do I want to continue using this? But uh, overall, to Matthew Hussey's point of, of pushing yourself to meet people despite the pain, pushing yourself to do things despite the discomfort, if there's a big reward there like love, it's so worth it and at your old, on your deathbed, you will probably be grateful that you did that. You'll be grateful that you use the dating app maybe. <laughs> and dating apps can be uncomfortable and frustrating. They're not easy, not in my experience. It all depends what you're looking for and so many factors, but, but I push myself to continue exploring them because I'm like, what if that guy, what if my soulmate is on there and I'll meet him on the app instead of 10 years later when we accidentally run into each other? Like, what if, you know, like, 
there's somebody in the coffee shop. Like, what are the chances that person's gonna talk to you? So, you know, like the advantage of these dating apps is that they encourage people to talk. Anyways, I, that's a little bit of a tangent. Let me go to the next question and then I'm gonna read more responses. I lost my notes here. Let me pull them up. Okay, question number three, if any of you want to answer. How did you grow up and grow into yourself because of the relationship? How did you grow up and grow into yourself because of the relationship? Let me read some responses that have come through. Okay, so Zig, oh, there's a lot here. Okay, so April said, looking inward is the hardest sometimes because it's almost in our nature to blame others. You're right, you learn the most about yourself if you can st step back and analyze the situation. Zigzag said, I find that I have mourned the hopes I had for the relationship more than the loss of the actual person. I love that and I think that's so true, so, so true. Somebody else said that. I read a lot of books, you guys. <laughs> And in one of the books I read, they, they made that exact same point, and that's so true. F. Roy said at one point, it depends how hurt, deep the hurt goes. And I don't remember exactly what I was saying at that point, but I, I do think that a lot of things depend on how. Uh, Brooke said, I used to follow Matthew Hussey, but then I stopped and realized when it comes to dating, you just got to be yourself, but I know he works for some people. You know, for me, Matthew Hussey is not just about following his advice and his strategies, like that's a huge thing of his, and I agree it's not for everybody. I just love his perspective on things, and he pushes me to do things in my own way. So while his, his advice not, might not always pertain it's just, I just like hearing his perspectives and his motivation is very helpful for me. Let's see, April said, if you haven't found that person you're meant to be with, it might be because you still have more time to learn to get to the point that you and that person can recognize and appreciate each other. So true, or at least I hope it's true. <laughs> I think about that a lot and Jason and I talk a lot about this because, um, I don't want to like air all of his feelings and things, but he's pretty open. So, you know, we you know we both want to separately date other people. We have discovered that we're, we don't want to be with each other. We want to be friends. So we are very supportive of each other and in, in dating other people and finding each other's partners. And that's something that I've said to him before, because he his, he's asked like, why is, you know, it taking so long? And like, I wonder that too. And I, I really feel like it is part of the growth process. Some people are lucky and they meet when they're really young and have, haven't learned anything, but that also sometimes breaks people up, is that some people meet way too early and they wanna be with each other then, but they get married, and this, let me just use this scenario, they get married and then they realize they've turned into completely different people as they grow up, as they grow older. I actually am grateful that I haven't been married yet because I've had so much time to work on myself and to learn about myself. And so if any of you guys are in that same boat, like look at it as a gift. I, I think I want to have children, but I actually feel really grateful that I haven't had children yet because I've spent so much time on my own exploring life and learning and becoming the best person that I can be so I could be an amazing wife and hopefully an amazing mother. And I think that I am a better place now than years ago when I've thought about marrying several men or having kids with several men, like in my past, not simultaneously, but like there have been multiple men in my life that I've dated and thought I might marry and I might have kids with. And obviously there was a reason that didn't work out. Uh, actually, I was talking with another friend who's a Christian, and she said that she actually thanks God when relationships don't work out because there was a reason why they didn't. And so she'll say something to herself like, Thanks, thank you, God, for closing that door or slamming that door shut and protecting me from being in the wrong relationship. And I think that's a really nice way to look at it and a grateful way if, if you are a believer that there's a universal, spiritual, God-based way, a reason behind what's happening in your life. All right, more comments here. 
I love how engaged everybody is. Brooke said, I used to, I used J date many years ago is not for me, but I know people that have found partners on there. Yeah. You know, like it's not for everybody. I, I barely think online dating is for me, but it's kind of like, why not? So I use one app that's been pretty good. Oh yeah. So Gen Z recommended timer. Yeah. That is a good movie. I'll put that in the, um, in the notes here. If anybody else wants to, to see a movie around this topic, I think, where did my notes go? Timer is a, is a very sweet movie. It's been a while since I saw that. What else here? Rachel says, my husband and I have definitely grown up and into each other. I've learned more from him than anyone else. And it has only helped me in other friendships. That's beautiful. Stefan said, hi, Emerson girl. Do we go to Emerson together? Or Stefan, maybe it's Stefan, not Stefan. Do we go to Emerson together? Or do you just realize that I went to Emerson? April said, I can honestly say I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. My boyfriend and I found out we went to the same school and knew the same people, but we are glad we didn't know each other. We're so different now. We might not have liked and found each other earlier. Yeah, like, isn't that fascinating too? If, if any of you are watching The Bachelorette, <laughs> I like to watch that show with friends as like a little pastime slash guilty pleasure. And there's a, there's a contestant on The Bachelorette right now. I think he's still on, no spoilers. Um, but there's definitely one that was on in the beginning who she went to school with and she actually didn't like, I think they were in high school and she was older than him if I remember properly. And she had this horrible impression of him. So he came on the show and she's like, oh my God, not that guy. But as she got to know him on this show, she's realized that he's so different as an adult. So if it can happen to The Bachelorette, it can happen to any of us. All right, guys, we're over 46 minutes. So let's see here. Okay, there's one more question. One of the most popular sayings is, time heals all wounds. What did you discover over time that helped you heal your wounds the most? And any of you can chime in for this one. One of the most popular sayings is, time heals all wounds. What did you discover over time that helped you heal your wounds most? Hmm, that's a good one. Time definitely heals a lot of wounds. I also feel like uh, learning about ourselves and prioritizing healing heals our wounds, obviously healing heals wounds. So we have to look inward to really heal. And sometimes time is a bandage, not truly healing. So as I was saying earlier, during hard times in relationships or outside of relationships, like a breakup, for example, or the end of a relationship, They've been painful, and I, if I had chosen to just put a Band-Aid over it, over it, like, it wouldn't have truly healed it. And when I have done the healing work over one thing, oftentimes things from the past come up that I put Band-Aids over. That makes sense. So I feel like time is helpful. It makes us feel better, but it doesn't necessarily heal us until we decide to do the work. So for me, what has helped me heal my wounds is reading and talking to other people about it and listening to different perspectives. Friends don't always help because a lot of times friends just want to tell you something that makes you feel good or they'll say something like, oh, get over him. He's not worth it. He wasn't right for you. Like that's so much easier for someone to say that from the outside, but I'm sh you guys can probably relate to this. Whereas sometimes we have feelings for people that we know aren't our soulmates, that we know aren't the best choice for us, that we know are just, we're, we're drawn to them for some reason or another. Like in my meditation workshop, the teacher was saying how oftentimes we're, we're physically attracted to and we've got chemistry with people that are are actually not good for us like sorry I have something in my eye um they're people that are reminding us of like an, sometimes an old wound or they remind us of our parents in some cases they remind us of things like below the surface that like 
they're exciting and like bad, quote unquote. I don't usually like to word, use the words good and bad, but but they they're igniting something in us. So we get excited about them because we know we shouldn't be with them or because like, yeah, there's, it's hard to describe. There's like a shadow involved or something like that's often the chemistry. But how many of you can relate to, there's people in your lives who you know are good for you, who have all the qualities that you feel like you should have in your relationship, but you have absolutely no chemistry with them. And the teacher was just talking about how frustrating that is. It's usually the people that we're best suited for are the ones that we're not like super attracted to. And that actually kind of reminds me of like arranged marriages in India, how, how their success rate is so high. It's because they're not going on, on chemistry. They're being matched and then they have to just make it work. And then they end up working because of that and they end up falling deeply in love and they end up becoming attracted to each other. So Maybe that works really well, I don't know. Why did I bring this up? I think this is about the wound thing. I got very, very distracted by that point, but I think it was because <laughs> those people that we can be wildly attracted to might end up really hurting us. That's happened to me a lot. A lot of the people that I like really wanna be with and I feel really rejected by, or like the people that like string me along and then break my heart. All of those type of things have usually been with like people that really aren't that great for me. Oh, my point was that friends aren't always the best people to ask for advice on, relationship advice, because they're biased towards you. It's easy for them to recognize when somebody is a bad choice for you, but that doesn't mean it's easy to get over them. And so what helps me heal my wounds is reading really great books on the subject matter. I, I'll list them out in the description field when this video is done. I've read a ton of great books on all these subjects of romance. So if you guys are looking for more resources that uh, give you really great details and all of this, I'll share a bunch. So I dove right into them and I've read a lot in the past year about love and healing and they have helped me heal so much. So that would be my answer. Okay, we're almost at the hour mark. Uh, Carrie just asked what I'm having for dinner. I'm going to meet up with my friends to watch The Bachelorette tonight, and we will be eating something together, probably poke, vegan poke. There's a restaurant in LA called Sweet Fin Poke, and they have vegan options on their menu, and my friends love it. They're not vegan, so we might all order from this place and get takeout and watch cheesy television together. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let me read some other comments before I go. Thank you so much for being here, April. And Brooke says she used to hate those comments just to move on. Yes, they can be very frustrating. Uh, uh, Nod8D said, time doesn't heal wounds, but only lighten the pain. I agree. And Brooke says, think that I think that happens a lot. I always say never judge a book by its cover which I think was in relation to not feeling chemistry with somebody. And let's see here. Uh, Yadi said, realizing the fall was not as bad. Yes. Zigzag says, time allows us to do the work on ourselves with deep and often brutally honest honesty that heals the wounds. Yes. Teresa brought up the Beyond Burger, who she, which she tried recently based on my raving review. I'm glad that you liked it. And Carrie didn't realize there was vegan poke. You know, you can make poke out of a lot of things. Uh, tomatoes are great for poke. I think certain, was it daikon radish can be good for that. Tofu you could use. Uh, Gen Z says that she doesn't have enough vegan options in Miami. I know, but I think they're getting better. And are you gonna go to the Seed Food and Wine in November? I might go to that, or I might be speaking there. Uh, Shamza says, I think everything happens for a reason. It's part of your path in life, so you just gotta go through it and grow stronger. Rachel said, I would say something I learned is that what people say or do isn't always what they mean. I used to take everything someone said as 100% accurate and true to how they feel. That's true. All right, Gen Z. Um, just look up Seed Food and Wine Festival. It's in November, somewhere in Miami. 
and that's all I know at the moment. Uh, Carrie asked if I watch Claire Michelle on YouTube. Sounds familiar. Let's see. And thank you, Unlimited Flows, for joining tonight. I'm about to wrap things up. Um, let me see. Claire Michelle. Oh, she's vegan as well. Um, I actually don't know who... Oh, wait a second. If this is the Claire that I met when she first moved here. It's hard to tell from her photos, but I think this is... Yeah, 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 yeah. I I met Claire. <laughs> it's so funny to... You know, I'm so connected. Like, I know so many people in the vegan world. And, uh, yeah, I met Claire maybe when she first started her YouTube channel last year and she had just moved to LA and so now she has over a hundred thousand subscribers and gets all these views that's it's amazing to me but it's it's like a young vegan girl thing like it's amazing how well they do for themselves um, but yes I definitely know who she is but I don't watch that content um, okay and Chelsea said I'm going through a breakup and find myself spending a lot of time blaming myself for the things that went wrong I think that that's just my personality I don't have a group grip of its truth I think this is a good note to end on it's very easy to blame ourselves and think about what went wrong and what we could have done differently. That's sometimes part of the process. I go through that too. However, I haven't found that it leads me anywhere. I don't feel like it makes me feel any better to ruminate on the past, to think about how I could have done things differently, to shame myself, guilt myself, blame myself. It's in the past. And so the very spiritual Zen perspective is to always stay as focused on the future as possible as part of the benefit or one of the main benefits of meditation. And if we are too connected to the past, there's just no use. It's just causing us hurt and pain because we can't change it. So acceptance is huge. I'm reading another good book on that right now. I'll add this to the list. It's all about surrender. So there will be a list of books that I recommend, some movies, some podcast resources for all of you guys that want to learn more about this. And uh, obviously... So many people can relate. Um, and Teresa had a, a quick question about um, V Dog, I think, right? That you that giving them vegetables. Um, a different topic that I I can't spend too much time on on the moment. If you want to private message me or email me, Teresa, I can give you a longer answer. And Brooke is supporting Chelsea. She said that coming from someone who was in a ten year relationship and then had a lot of breaks. Find some friends that will support you and watch some supernatural TV. <laughs> and um, Carrie also said, I think you should go slowly and do half. Oh, that's separate for the dog question. And Sam's asked, you should do another chat on focusing on the now. Yes, I can absolutely do that. No, no apologies necessary, Teresa. I just uh, want to end this before we get to the hour mark. Um, just being mindful of people that are watching the recording especially. But thank you all so much for being here and participating. Thanks to anybody that watched this all the way through of the recording. I do these uncensored videos every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I will put a link to time and date, which allows you to calculate the, um, the time for you. And um, Carrie, I actually do live chats multiple times a week, and here's where else you can find me. One is every Friday at 5 p.m. I 5 p.m. Pacific. I do a Facebook live. I do a YouTube live, and I also often do an Instagram live. Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific. Again, I'll link to where you can convert the time zone. And so that's just like eco vegan gal related. Those are usually very short videos, kind of Q and A's or like recommendations on things. If you guys want to be more connected as a community, if you want to get to know each other, get to see more from me, get all sorts of stuff that I'm working on just for you, eco vegan pal is the place to be. And that will be linked in the description field 
for this video. I would love to have you there. If you watch the very beginning of this video, you'll hear me talk more about it. So just head back and watch that. And uh, yeah, I would love to have a ton of you in there. We can talk about things like vegan dogs. We can talk about relationships. We can talk about meditation, health, whatever you want. All that stuff is going to be covered in Eco Vegan Pal, and you can continue connecting. So, like all these great conversations you guys are having in the chat right now with one another, you can continue that on Eco Vegan Pal. And as I said at the beginning, I haven't officially opened it up into the public since November, but if any of you guys want to get in right now, just message me. There is a membership fee. And um, I'm only taking annual memberships at the moment, but I'm open to doing like a payment plan if that works better for you guys. And eventually I'll be opening it up to monthly memberships, um, meaning you can pay on a monthly basis and then come and go whenever you want. But right now I'm limiting it to annual memberships to, so that people can stay super committed to it. And uh, the bang for your buck is gonna be huge. It's gonna be so much in there for all of you. So if you wanna be part of it, just either private message me on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, or Twitter, or email me, and I'll leave you a link to how to do all of that down below this video. Thanks again for all of you that were here live today. I will see you here again next Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific, and I can also see you on Friday at 5 p.m for Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram Live on the main Eco Vegan Gal channels. And if you wanna see more from me, that's where Eco Vegan Pal comes in. I do these video Q and A's every single weekday, Monday through Friday. Ted, thank you so much. And um, I will look forward to next week's topic. I don't know what it's gonna be, but if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Okay, bye everyone. I would continue talking. But I need to take a break and go for a walk with Evie. Hey, Evie. Evie, wanna go for a walk? <laughs> can you see her back there? Evie, you wanna go for a walk? All you can see are her little ears. How, that's like the cutest. Okay, now that I said that I have to actually go take a walk, otherwise she's gonna be upset. <laughs> Bye guys, see you next week or earlier. Have a great one.